So now we know a bit about what to look for when we are assessing if our filter is functioning properly. Now it's time to give some basic intuition of how we can tune our filter in order to get it working as good as possible. What we typically mean by tuning in this case is to make smaller adjustments to our model parameters, mainly the process and measurement noise covariances, and then to evaluate the performance of our filter using a combination of the measures that we presented earlier. To be honest, when developing a filter, this is perhaps the most difficult part where we spend much of our development time. To get a feeling for what's happening when we are adjusting our noise parameters, let's look at a toy example where we want to estimate the position of a vehicle using some positioning measurements from some generic sensor. To do this, we need two models. A motion model, describing how the vehicle moves, and a measurement model, describing the relationship between the state and our observations. And in the common filter setting, both of these models are Gaussian models, like this. And where the parameter that we typically want to tune is the process noise covariance and the measurement noise covariance. If we start with the process model. In this example, the purpose of this model is to give a probabilistic model of the position of the vehicle at the current time k, given that we knew its position at the time before. In the comma filter setting, again, we describe this as a Gaussian density with this mean here and this covariance. So if we look at this for our example, the motion model here will describe where we expect the vehicle to be using the deterministic part of the model. And then we have the process noise covariance, which will model how much we think the vehicle can possibly deviate from this expectation. So we know uh, the state at the previous time instance. This is deterministic. We know this as we condition on it in the model. Um, then the model describes where we expect the vehicle to be. So this, perhaps here, this is then a deterministic function of our previous state. And then we have some uncertainty around this point, which is then related to our covariance, qk minus 1. Typically, these deviations described by qk minus 1 are the result of a change in behavior between the consecutive time instances by, for example, accelerating, braking, or steering in this case. The goal here is to choose q such that the motion model captures how likely different maneuvers are. The measurement model, on the other hand, we want to describe the stochastic relation between the state at the current time, and the current observation yk. Again, in a common filter case, we describe this as a Gaussian, with a mean that describes where we expect the observation to be, and the covariance rk, which models our measurement uncertainty. This uncertainty should capture both our modeling uncertainty, that comes from making simplifications in this part of the model, and pure measurement noise in the sensor itself, that comes from thermal noise or other noise sources specific to that sensor type. And information about this type of sensor noise, so terminal noise and, and other sources, uh, can typically be found in the data sheet from the sensor manufacturer. So given that we know where the vehicle is, this is xk, this, we condition on this, we want to describe a probabilistic model for where we expect the measurements to end up. Let's say that in this case we're measuring the front of the vehicle here, so this would be hk times xk. And then we have some uncertainty ellipse around this, which then is described by rk. And then we expect our observations to fall within this region here. So if we generate measurements for this, we would expect them to look something like this. So now let's look at our example of how a comma filter can behave for different choices of our noise parameters. In this example, we want to estimate the position of this vehicle using these noisy observations. Note that we have illustrated all the observations here, but the filter will only consider them one at a time. In the first scenario, we have chosen the process noise covariance, qk minus one, to be much too small, and will not allow our estimated state to deviate from our deterministic prediction. And in this case, our deterministic prediction assumes that we are just going straight. 
As we see, the filter more or less ignores the observations as it believes them to be less reliable than our motion model. If we instead choose a too small measurement noise covariance, RK, this will mean that we are telling the filter that the measurements are very informative. What happens now is that the filter will trust the measurements too much and we will not have a very car-like filter trajectory due to that measurement noise will be transferred to the state estimates. So, if we instead have a good balance between process and measurement noise, the filter will produce estimates that are both behaving like we expect a car to behave and adapting according to what the measurements indicate. Like this. So, to summarize filter tuning, a key aspect in tuning is to select the ratio between the process noise and the measurement noise. This ratio is sometimes called the signal to noise ratio or SNR. As we saw in the toy example, if the SNR is high, that is that we have less measurement noise than process noise, we will have a quickly adapting filter that relies more on new data than the predictions. And if on the other hand, SNR is low, that is we have more measurement noise than process noise, the filter will perceive the data to be noisy and that we rely more on the predictions. And as we saw in the toy example, the filter will react slowly to new data. And as we mentioned, uh, typically we can get a good idea of what the measurement noise are to be either from the manufacturer uh, or by making controlled experiments where we collect data in simple scenarios from which we can uh, estimate R. By fixing the measurement noise, the motion or process noise, Q, can be selected by tuning. And lastly, unless you know the state sequence, you can study the properties on the innovation to guide you in tuning the filter. And we end with a self-assessment question related to these noise coherences.